a grouch on and a, a sour face, you're like, well, I don't know if I want to stay very long or not. But when folks are smiling and laughing and you feel the love of God, it just feels like home and peace is there. You know, and, that, and that's way that's way the house of God ought to be. It ought to be a joyful place, a place that we want to enjoy to go. We get up looking forward to go, Sister Betty, desiring to hear the Word of God, desiring to see people's faces that we've prayed for during the week, or we we've heard things that have happened to them to go and bless them. Uh, and I just thank God for His mercy that we can do that. That He put that love in me because before I was when I was a sinner, I didn't have that love. I didn't care whether you done good or you done bad. I was worried about myself, but. Since the Lord saved me, I do care. I do care about other people's soul. I care about their livelihood and what has happened to them throughout the week. And, you know, that's what God wants us to be. Brother Terry taught on that this morning about letting the flesh get the glory or God get the glory. And God should always get the glory. And and he is so worthy. Before we start this morning, I'm going to read the, the few announcements this morning. If you don't have a bulletin, they're out back. Get you one. Uh, we welcome you this morning. If you're new here, we do invite you. Thank you for coming, and welcome to be here. Uh, we have a baby shower tonight for Cooper and Hope Spence. It's a girl, Sawyer May. They have registered at Walmart's. Uh, there's BBS Job Board is on the foyer. Be sure to stop and sign up with job you would like. We always need lots of help, Sister Mary Lou will tell you, and everybody that works there. The more help, the merrier. It always seems to go better with the more help when you're corralling kids, uh, especially little kids, those that work the nurseries and the Little kids, the five-year-old and under, they need all the help they can get. Uh, we have the spring banquet coming up April the 25th, 6 p.m. Please sign up today. It says a $10 per person sign-up sheet on the bulletin board. Uh, honored to have you. Baby shower May the 3rd for Jeremiah and Sidney Humphrey. It's a boy, Isaiah Luke. They're registered at Walmart. Uh, and something I am looking forward to see is in its own up in May is the Pentecost outpouring in May 17th. And there's many other events there on the back and there. So uh, you can't say you didn't hear the bulletin or miss out. So get you one and, and be pre be uh, informed. Be aware of what's going on in your church today. And uh, this morning, if we'll all stand together. There's many needs in this house, and the Lord knows every one of them. So if we would, uh, lay your hand on your neighbor. Pray for them, pray for you this morning, we pray for this service. Lord Jesus, we just thank you that you, Lord God, would rule in this house today, Lord, that you would lead us and guide us by the Holy Ghost. We pray, Lord, that when Brother Jimmy brings forth the word, Lord God, it's under the power and the anointing. We pray, Lord, for the song leader, Lord God, that it'll touch heaven, Lord, that it be a sweet smell ascending unto heaven, and I pray a blessing upon your people this morning, Lord God, that their ears be open to hear, their hearts ready to receive the word of God. Let it be a ground that has been prepared, made ready, hundredfold ground, Lord God, that it, Lord God, be ready, Lord God, to receive your word and go forward. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we just pray this morning. Amen. Turn around shake somebody's hand. Tell them you're glad to see them this morning. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. He's coming after you and me. Joy's ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. We're headed for that jubilee.
sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good you are good to me oh I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good you are good to me and I want to scream it out from every mountain top your goodness knows no bounds your goodness never stops your mercy follows me your kindness fills my life your love amazes me and i sing because you are good and i dance because you are good and i shout because you are good you are good to me oh and i sing because you are good and i dance because you are good and you are good, you are good to me. And nothing and no one comes anywhere close to you. The earth and oceans deep only reflect this truth. And in my darkest night, you shine as bright as day. Your love amazes me. You are good and I shout because you are good, you are good to me. Oh, and I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good, you are good to me. Oh, I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good. You are good to me, and with a cry of praise, my heart will proclaim, you are good, you are good, and in the sun or rain, my life celebrates, you are good, you are good, and with a cry my heart will proclaim you are good you are good and in the sun or rain my life celebrates you are good you are good and I sing because you are good and I You are good, you are good to me. Oh, I sing because you are good. You are good. If you taste his goodness, I'll come up around the front here and you tell the Lord good. how good he's been to you. you. Get out behind that oh, pew and come tell the Lord. Show him the goodness oh, and the mercy good. of God. You are good and I'll shout because you are good. You are good to me. Oh, and we sing because you are good. I dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good. Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the sun. Thank you for the rain. Our life proclaims. Thank you, Jesus. Praise to you, Lord. Praise to you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy. Bless you, Jesus. The splendor of 
the Lord, He's good. You know, it. it uh, all the songs were great. But when she started singing, you're good. I felt the weighty presence of the Lord usher into the room. I felt that presence of love begin to flow. I felt the hearts begin to lift in this house to see. It says the goodness of God leads us to repentance. It leads us to a place that says, I'm a sinner. As that man stood on that rock that day praying, he, said, he smote his breast and said, Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. That's what he showed me. And his goodness led me to a place to repent, brother. And then brought me to a rock that I could be broken upon. That it, One of these days, if I don't repent, if I didn't repent, it'd follow me and I'd be ground to powder. That's, a, that's not a place I want to be. I want to be as that first song we sang. We turned my ear towards heaven listening for that trumpet to sound. Because you are good that you saved me. You are good that you made a sacrifice. Give your only begotten son that I could go free. He hung on a cross and took a whipping that I didn't have to take. He took a thorn of crowns, that crown of thorns, and they put it on his head and he began to bleed. I don't know if you've ever been run up in a rose bush before, but I'm going to tell you, try to get out of it. It hurts. It'll hook you every which way but loose. And he suffered those things. He suffered all of that because he was willing and obedient that we just could call on his name to find salvation and be set free. All of those that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That heart that becomes humble. Brother, when, he, when we become humble and we begin to look and cry out that you are good, there's nothing good in me, nothing good in this world that's going to last forever, but he's in a kingdom without end, a kingdom that will never fail. Brother, Brother Terry talked about this morning. He loads us every day with blessings that we don't even recognize or understand or know about. You wonder why you took a left instead of a right. Well, there might have been something waiting on you the other way this morning. We never know. But you know, I'm going to ask her to come back and sing that song, You Are Good. I mean, we got all morning. We're, I don't believe we're in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry. I come this morning to let God know that I love Him because He is good. And if you've tasted the goodness of God, I'd like for you to get up and get out of your seat this morning and show God you know, he said they danced before him in the Old Testament. David had people that danced, ran banner, banners around the room. They, they, they done those things to glorify God. And sometimes we get caught in a little seat and we don't want to get out because, well, my neighbor's watching. Well, if there's a $1,000 laying down here, you wouldn't care who's watching. You come get it. If they said it's for whoever can get here first, more than likely most folks would, Come get it, you know. But we have more than that. We have streets of gold to walk on. We have gates of pearl to walk through. Amen. We have walls of sardine stone and all of those precious pearls that they're made out of that we can look at in a city that, hey, my, I cannot comprehend that. I can't comprehend that. My finite little natural mind cannot see that. What we strive so hard to get is paved on the streets up there, you know, but. My soul, my soul, he says, tells me right there is worth more than all gold in heaven or wherever because his son died for me. He didn't die for those streets of gold. He died for me, Brother Terry. And I'm going to ask her to come sing that song again. Amen. I leaned over and told Sister Susan just a second ago, can't nobody know what he's done for you like you know yeah. what he's done for you. Amen. So all I'm asking is all the saved to stand up today and say so. All the redeemed, yeah. all the worshipers, that song says, let the worshipers yeah. arise this yeah. morning. Amen. Let them stand up and be marked. Amen. I want him to look down this morning and know, I mean, I'm glad you're here, but I want him to know I'm here, Sister Rhonda. Yeah. I want him to know I remember where I came back when I look back and see how far he's brought me from. Amen. Yes. And think about where I'm going and where I could have been. I just think this morning that he's worthy of a little more than worrying about who's watching. Amen. I know. I mean, when I first got in this thing, all I ever thought about was, oh, who's going to see me raise my hand? He's worthy. If he wants my hand raised, amen, he could just say so and my hand would raise. Amen. Uh, what's somebody going to think if I just go and kneel down? Amen. Well, let them think. Amen. Maybe they go to thinking about where they're at with the Lord this morning and the relationship that they have with the Lord. Let yeah. the worshipers this morning yes. arise and let them know that He's here 
Amen. We all right. I don't know if you noticed where you drove into this morning, but it's all right. If you want to make a little hallelujah in here this morning. Amen. If you want to get a little shout going this morning. Amen. Because it's just expected yes. up in here. Amen. I yes. tell you, when things begin to happen, when the people of God begin to call. Amen. They kept their mouth shut for six days around Jericho, but on the seventh day they opened their mouth up and the walls come tumbling down it said. Amen. The trumpets begin to sound and them walls it said come straight down and yes. Brother Jack, they shot in there and they begin to plunder that place. Make war. Well, praise Hallelujah. God. They're going to sing it one more time. Hallelujah. Amen. Would the worshipers just arise this morning. And I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good, you are good to me. Oh, and I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good and you are good to me. Oh, I sing because you are good and I good and I shall because you are good you are good to me oh I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shall because you are good oh you are good to me oh I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shall because you are good you are good to me, oh, I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good, you are good to me. Nothing and no one comes anywhere close to you, the earth and ocean. You 
are good and I'll shout because you are good. You are good. Thank you, Lord. I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good. You are good. Oh, I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good. You are good to me. Oh, I sing because. You are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good, you are good to me.
Folks, the water the water's troubled this morning. If you're bound up in here, if something's holding you back, you can be free this morning. The Spirit of the Lord's dealing with you to be free. The walls of Jericho may be surrounding you, but we can give a shout here in a minute. We can shout unto the Lord, and that wall will come tumbling down. You, you can come out of that city and be free. Brother Jeff, I've been in that city and seized up before. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. He is wonderful. Greatly to be praised this morning. Oh, we can walk in the victory. We can walk in that life. We can walk in the joy of the Lord. We can be free. We don't have to, you know, you can watch the news. You can watch this old world. We better turn our ear towards heaven and begin to proclaim that He is good. For our redemption is drawing nigh. You can look up. These things begin to happen in this world that people thought would never happen. In this world. But I'm telling you, the water is troubled this morning. Don't let your neighbor, don't let Satan war against your mind and hold you in bondage. These altars are open. That's what Brother Jimmy's going to preach. He's going to preach in some way or fashion to bring you to an altar. That's where he's headed. That's the, that's the agenda of, of the salvation message, of the coming of the Lord, that He's coming again to come to an altar. And we've all got to come to that place of an altar in our life. I don't care who we are. I don't care if it's in the woods, it's your workplace, if it's at this church house. Just, just like we said, we don't, we don't see what everything's done, but you can tell by someone's countenance when God has dealt with their heart and they... They've repented like faith. That like faith. That, when I rub shoulders, Brother Terry, I know that he's been born again. My sister-in-law and others in here, my son, my children, I can tell that they have found the faith. I can, I can, you can feel that like spirit. And we all need to come to that place this morning. For the Lord is dealing this morning. For He is good. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's just give a shout of praise on the count of three. Let's just shout unto the Lord that the walls come tumbling down. That souls that are bound in this house come loose. He said proclaim those things in my feast days. We're having a feast this morning. I believe we're feasting around the throne room of God this morning. On the count of three, we're going to shout to the Lord, all right? Everybody ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! Lord God, Lord, loose them, Lord. Loose, Lord God. Bring them free, Lord. Set them free, Lord God. Set the captives free, Lord. Loose them, Lord God, this morning. Bring them, Lord God, at peace with you, Lord. Oh, Lord God, we just pray, Father, that your will be done, Lord. Bring them to that understanding, Father. Hallelujah! Hallelujah!
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Nobody knows like I know what he's done for me. Amen. Hallelujah. They, oh, my. Hallelujah. I know some people think we're going to mess things up, but can I just preach for a little bit? Amen. Amen. While you're finding your seats, I have our ushers just come up here. I don't want to miss the opportunity to give. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Brother Cooper, won't you pray? Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm all right if the Lord wants to turn the tater wagon over, let it roll. Let it roll. If he wants to tear up the program and throw it in the trash, let him have at it. Amen. The only reason I've ever got a program is just to get me through until he shows up and decides what we're going to do. Amen. I got notes, but, you know, sometimes I use them and, Sometimes I don't. Today would have, it was a good day to twirl, wasn't it, Sister Betty? Amen. Wow, wow. The Spirit of God is moving. And I'm not, I'm not just trying to be a cheerleader this morning, although I will be. If he wants one, I'll be one for a while. Amen. But I could tell you, this is that that the prophet spoke of. Amen. He said, in the last days, I'm going to pour my Spirit out on all flesh. Amen. Now here's the problem. All the Pentecostals think they got it figured out. Amen. But he's going to do some strange things in the last days. I'm going to pour my spirit out on all flesh, he says. And, and some of that may not be very pleasing to some of us, the flesh he decides to pour it out on. But guess what? He's sovereign. He can just do whatever he wants to. Amen. He's only bound by his word. And outside of that, our opinion don't matter. He's not held back by our opinions or our attitudes, our judgments, or, or none of that stuff. Well, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I got ready to preach for today. Me and Sister Quita done talk, and, and she'll be coming tonight and, and bringing the word. And I, I just think I wouldn't miss it if I was y'all. Amen. I like it when that blood vein sticks out in the side of her neck about that big. She gets to preaching and the Spirit of God just rings her out up here and just 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 uses her, amen, to, to bring the Word of God. I love to preach. I love to preach. Don't mistake that. I like to be the preacher, amen. But I like preaching altogether. Why? Because there's a great opportunity for God to speak into what's going on in my life. Amen. I posted a little article this week on Facebook showed a picture of a man crying out to God asking him to speak to me speak to me and the next picture below it showed the Lord handing him a Bible Amen well I guess we'll get that later Amen he has spoken to us Amen he speaks to us I tell you what I like I like it when people say well, that person hears from God more than Moses. They hear from God more than Paul and all the disciples. They've always heard something from God. You know what that is? That's a voice of jealousy. <laughs> well, somebody didn't like it, but I don't care. It's the truth. Amen. Because if you wanted to hear from God like they're hearing from God, you might find out what they're doing to hear from God like they're hearing from God and start doing those things. Amen. Well, I ain't even... Read my title yet. Who am I? I'm going to preach on the thought today. Who am I? Boy, the Lord showed me some things praying in the backyard yesterday. And uh, boy, just rough. I thought, Lord, now I'm going to preach what I preached again Wednesday night if you don't give me something good. Hold on just a second. I ain't ever done this, but I'm going to do this. Boy, I just enjoyed Wednesday night. I loved what the Lord gave me to say. And I encourage you to get a copy of that. It's in the archives. Listen to that. I preached a message that was entitled, If I Was the Devil. And I'm telling you, it is a, a timely message, and uh, it really speaks to what the devil's doing and what we're letting him get away with. Amen. 
And, and I want to encourage you. I don't do that very often. I, you know, I just ain't me. But uh, I want to encourage you to at least go in the archives if you have the ability and take the time to listen to that message. And, and then just see if it don't speak to what's going on. Allow that to encourage you to get to work for the Lord. Amen. And, and to be a voice for Him. Amen. You know, one thing about it, it didn't matter if they was uh, uh, shy people or not. Whenever they marched around Jericho, if they wouldn't have hollered out, if they wouldn't have done what God told them to, I don't know that them walls would have come down. But I got it in my head that if they wasn't hollering, there's one behind them with a stick, tap them on the head, say, you better, you better holler. That's what God told us to do. You better holler. Amen. Well, let's read some scriptures this morning. Let's go to Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 through 12. Just great to have all of our visitors today, but just want to point out for you guys that haven't noticed yet that Zach and his new wife, I was going to try to mumble so y'all wouldn't know. I didn't know her name, but I hadn't remembered. Taylor? Yes, Zach Taylor's here today, and if I understand and the pictures were correct, and it wasn't, they're married now. Amen. Praise God. Congratulations. It's good to have Mike's son here with us and and Jason yes now I understand why brother Arnold is the way he is <laughs> things just slip out of your mind about the time you go to use them and so it's good to have them here in service with us this morning and we, we pray that you're just blessed by the Lord this morning not by us but by the Lord this morning Moses, or Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 through 12. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. I am come now to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey to a place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. And now therefore behold, cry, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians have oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people and the children of Israel out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I? that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this will be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God in, upon this mountain. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord. We know for a fact that you're already here, Lord, in this service. Now, God, I pray, Lord, that through the preaching of the word, Lord, you'll speak to hearts. Lord, there's people right now in this place, Lord, that, that are being held captive by the enemy. Lord, I know that through the Spirit and through the Word today, and I pray, God, today, Lord, it'll be their day of, of exodus out of that. I pray, Lord, today that through the preaching of the Word, they'll see that the God is no respecter of persons, and, Lord, that they will be set free today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Oh, man. As the Lord began to point out to me and to show me some lives of some people in the Bible, and we're going to look at several uh, people in the Bible today, and I know this ain't going to be new to, to some of you guys, but how it is that, that God has used very imperfect people to accomplish His will in this earth. As a matter of fact, we don't see any example, amen, other than the Christ of anybody perfect being used by God because that's just a, a, what they call an oxymoron to believe that there's anybody perfect enough to be used by God if that's the, the qualification. For we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There ain't none of us perfect. Amen. We've all got a past. But some people's past 
weighs on them a lot more than others. Amen. Some people really get a hold of the God has set me free from that and I don't have to be in bondage to that anymore. And others drag it around for the rest of their life. And they just can't get past what they've done and what they've come out of and the lifestyles and those things. And they allow those things to hold them in captivity to the place that they can't even serve God like they'd like to. And more than that, that they can't accomplish, Brother Doug, the destiny that God has set in place for their life. Amen. Well, don't get quiet on me now. Amen. Let's preach together. Amen. And we'll get through it better. Amen. And so Moses, we I know y'all hope need a Sunday school lesson this morning, but I'll give you a little one. Moses, when he was born, he said he was a goodly child to look upon, the Bible said. And his mother hid him for three months. And, and during the time they were killing the babies of the Israelites and, and destroying them and... Uh, uh, they was trying to keep population control on the Israelites because they didn't want them to rise up, take over Egypt. So they was nervous about it. They began to control. And so Moses is born in an era of great tragedy. Kids are being murdered. The Israelites are being abused and mistreated. And he's being treated good. <laughs> Amen. She's, she's taking care of him. She's got building a little ark to put him in because she knows she can't hide him forever. And she puts him in an ark. She sends him around the corner. And Pharaoh's daughter, I believe it is, finds, finds Moses, some of the servants. And he's scooped up from that situation. And, and man, things are going good for him. Amen. Think about it now. If you were scooped up out of, out of the junk that you was in and the potential to be killed and brought into Pharaoh's home, amen, the, 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 the king of Egypt, it, this place was loaded. It was, it was uh, rich and, and, and everything was at his disposal. And he's going to be educated just like Pharaoh's sons are and, and, and brought up in that. And all of that's going to be at, at his uh, discretion to use chariots. And, and I'm sure he's being treated different and, and, and educated and all that money and thinking, boy, 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 we'd look into that and we'd say, he's blessed. He's blessed. Amen. And one day, I believe even as a child, you know, there's people that has giftings and callings in their life, and I could tell you they operate sometimes whether you're serving God or you're not. Now, hold on. Let me talk about that just for a second because that will help you out. Amen. Don't raise your hand right now. Wouldn't be a good time, but anybody in here ever been told, you, you're a born leader. You just, be, you just built to lead people. Amen. And I've known people that just had that brother coy poured into their life. You could just tell people were just inclined to follow them and to do the things that they did. They's leaders. They could just get a group of people together, no problem. Amen. But here's the problem that lies in that. If you don't put your giftings and talents to work for God, you'll be leading people right off into hell. Amen. Well, let me help you with that a little bit. I, I, I was pretty good... I don't know, I wouldn't say natural born leader, but but I could talk people into doing stuff. Amen. And so I'd go, I'd wait off down there to 101, and I could go get some uh, alcohol, and I don't fall over, yeah. I used to go get alcohol, and it wasn't very long I could get a crowd of people together and get them to doing maybe something they was going to do or not do. I don't know, but I was leading them in a direction that I didn't need to be leading them. Y'all with me? So we're using, sometimes we're using our giftings and our callings in our life without even realizing it, that we're leading people in the wrong way. Well, I thank you, preacher. That's what I needed is some more something on me this morning. Well, you're welcome. Amen. Shame on you. You know better. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We know better. I knew better. Amen, I know, but Daddy come down there to the, uh, I remember one time we was down in Atkins at a guy's trailer house and had some stuff, and Daddy had showed up there, he'd have probably spanked me, be, been 20 years old, right down there with that big old uh, uh, thing, thing of, of liquor. I knew better, I knew better than what I was doing, but I wasn't doing better than I knew. Amen, I was just doing what I wanted to do, well, and wallered around in that stuff and just just got it all over me, amen. And that's what Moses did. He just wallered around in the palace, got it all over him, amen. He, I bet he smelt like them, he dressed like them, he acted like them. But there's something way down inside of him that knows that he's still a Hebrew. 
Amen. And so one day he goes out and he begins to look around and he sees them abusing his brethren and something. I'm telling you, sometimes when you see your people just being abused, amen, something rises up inside of you. And I'm one of those. I don't like to see the little guy getting run over, amen. It just does something to me. I can't hardly control it sometimes and and some of y'all know that. And But but he sees this going on and he, he flies in there and it says... He premeditates. He looks to the left. He looks to the right. He he didn't just get in an altercation. Oops, he killed him. He he meant to. He he killed the man. He buries him. And you all know the story. Next thing you know, he's on the run. Boy, he's just disqualified himself from being a man that God can use. Amen. He runs off to the backside of the desert and runs into some girls and they're, they're, they're sheep herders and he gets involved with them and he waters their sheep and winds up with a guy named Jephro. Jephro thinks he's a pretty good guy and so he gives him his daughter Zipporah as a wife and he's just back there, man, you know what? I killed that Egyptian and I messed my life up bad. I may not ever be able to go back to Egypt, but it looks like God may bless me right out here in the sheep field. And so he's just working with Jephro. I think Jephro likes him, and he's letting him watch his sheep, work with him, paying him, and did all that's going on. Life's good. All of a sudden, he's out there one day. It comes by a bush that's on fire. Amen. And God begins to speak to him and just messes his whole world up. Because everything that he's grown to believe about his life, I murdered a man. I was once an Egyptian, but I could never be an Egyptian again. They'll never forgive me for what I've done. They'll never take me back in the palace. Amen. And now I just want to live this life, and now God's called me to do something above and beyond what I had set for my own life to do. Amen. And he begins to make excuses. Amen. He, he at this point... Uh, he begins to tell him that I, I can't speak well, Lord. Amen. We read the scriptures, and he told him, "You're gonna go." What a job! I mean, couldn't the Lord started out and said, "You're gonna be the." Uh, 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 well, I'm trying to think of a, a small job. You, you're gonna be uh, uh, the guy that goes and makes sure that our frogs all stay in the lake or something like that. Keeps the frogs in the lake, and then if you do good at that, we'll promote you up, and you can be over something. No, no, God just called him as he seen him. Amen. He said, you're going to be the one I'm going to send back to Pharaoh, the king, to deliver my people out of that situation. Now, God is speaking to hearts and lives in this hour. And he's making calls on your life and asking you to do things. And some of y'all are crying with, one, with a loud voice saying, I can't do that, Lord. That's not within me. Amen. I don't understand how it is we do that. I do it myself. But how is it that the cup tells the one that made the cup how he can be used? Amen. And, and, and uh, Lord, I can't be used for holding hot liquids because I, I just ain't very good at that. Oh, the Lord knows what you can handle. The Bible says He'll never put more on us, amen, than we can bear. And, and, and in every temptation, He'll provide a way out of that, amen. And, and so we're, we're looking at Moses, and Moses make an excuse, I can't do it, I can't do it. And you know, at this point, he's a murderer, he's a wanted man. Also, I don't know if you know this or not, but because he's a shepherd, the shepherds were considered an abomination to the Egyptians. So he is, he's really not the guy that needs to go back and see Pharaoh, I'm thinking. he's Because uh, Pharaoh's thinking now, not only have you murdered somebody, but you're a stinking shepherd too. And, and you've disgraced my daughter by doing these things. Man, I, I, I'm thinking of every reason in the world why Moses can't do it. Uh, and, and, and you know what God's saying? Yeah, you can. With every excuse, he's saying, yeah, you can. Moses is caught up in the past that he can't live the future today. And there's people in here, God's already showed me, that you're so caught up in what the past and what you didn't do and what you did do and the things you're saying, I can't do that. I, 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 it's not possible, Lord, for me to do that. I, I preached uh, over at that revival and some stuff come out of me I'd forgotten about. But I, re I remember and, 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 and I talked to Mom about it, I believe, a little bit later, but Whenever I was in school, if you got sent to the little green building, that meant that you couldn't read very good. And guess what? I had a seat in the little green in the little green room. And if I would have considered, Brother Chad, if I'd have considered every reason why I couldn't preach this gospel, so I hope I hope not. Some of y'all may be thinking of some reasons this morning why I shouldn't be. But I, but I hope not. But Brother Chad, if I'd have looked at every reason in my path, well, you, you was a drunk. 
and, and you're this, and you're that, and, and you never could read very good. You read slower than everybody else. And, and, and you get embarrassed when you get in front of crowds. And, 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 and all of these things, if I'd have looked and dwelled on those things and allowed the devil to have a foothold in there, I'd have never done nothing for the Lord. I'd have never done nothing. But there was something inside of me that wanted to do something. Amen. We need to get a something inside of us that wants to do something. Amen. I heard a message preached about getting a go ye. Go ye into the world. Getting a go ye in you. Letting something rise up. Folks, I just want to, I'm just going to haul off and preach, okay? Listen, we need the Holy Ghost. I'm convinced that He will be our goal. He will rise up inside of us. And in the hour that we're living in right now, He is not going to sleep or slumber, but He's going to be active, very active in our lives. Amen. So if you want to be a Spirit-filled Christian, you better just realize, hey, it's not going to be quiet and, and, and all of that stuff because the Lord's going to say, hey, go talk to that one. Hey, uh, give that one $10 or $20. Hey, do this or do that. And if you're not prepared for that well you may stand a little shaking in these last days amen Moses was man all of that responsibility man I, today I, I dare say there's nobody that's in this room that's going to bear the burden that Moses had to bear I forget they said it's over a million people that he led out of Egypt <laughs> Woo-wee. Can you imagine the complainers and the mumblers and the grumblers? And I could just tell you what I've learned about leadership both in the church and outside the church. <laughs> well, come on, Jimmy. All right, here I go. Here's the truth of the matter. If you make a decision as a leader, that's going to be somebody that don't like it. It don't matter. You you may have 90% of the folks like to decide, but there are going to be 10 that don't. Amen? And in this world, if you own a business, if you're a boss, there's going to be a group of people that don't like. So that's why it's very, very, very important that you hear from God. Amen? You'll be able to stand. I bet Moses, he got on the job training on that. Amen? But he had to hear, Brother Terry, from God. He had to hear from God to lead that group of people. I, I bet you every every two or three days they's ready to... Uh, well, let's, well, we know from the Scripture. They's ready to turn around and go back. This guy's not qualified to lead us out here in the desert. We better get back to those taskmasters. They treated us bad, but at least they treated us. He can't even get us no food, no water. Did you hear the murmuring and the complaining that would start, Oh, my Lord, if you ever fed into that, my Lord... Lord, it'd be like wildfire, Sister Betty, going, oh, you know what, let's just stone him and go back to Egypt. You know, I bet you if we tell Pharaoh that we killed him and we've made a bad decision, he'd let us back in. But that wasn't God's plan, amen. He was wanting to do something through Moses' life. Oh, my. If he'd have just sat back and said, I can't, I won't. Man, I killed somebody. How can I ever get past that? Man, I, I, you know, I'm just a, a shepherd, and these people think shepherds are the scum of the earth. How, how can I ever be effective voice in Egypt again? I look down through the Scriptures, and I see a young man named Joseph, and he's one of my, 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 my more favorite people of the Scripture because he just done what was right. Amen. He just done, every time you see him, he seemed to be doing what was right and just wound up in it. But you know, uh, Joseph, he didn't start out like that. Man, he's in a mixed up, dysfunctional family. What do you mean? I mean, he's got brothers that hates him, and rightfully so, because obvious to me that daddy's made an open confession that he loves Joseph more than he loves the rest of them. What kind of mess is this? I'm telling you what, Dr. Phil couldn't work that out in an hour. Amen. He'd be telling old Jacob, hey man, hey, you can't treat one better than the other. You got to treat them all. And let me sit down and have a talk with you here, Mr. Jacob. You 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 got these other boys messed up. And boy, sure enough, they's all messed up. They hate him. They couldn't even speak civilly to Joseph, man. He's messed up. And then Daddy, he ain't thinking right because he makes him a pretty little coat and puts it on him, dresses him up. So the other boys, every time they see him, Brother Doug, they're thinking, I'm going to wring his neck. I can't stand that little punk. Amen. Every time I see him, all I see is how much more Daddy loves him than he loves me. How much more? How much more? And, and you know, I don't think Joseph helped things out by, by, by he dreamed a dream, and then he got his brothers together and told them, one of these days, boys, y'all was going to bow down before me. <laughs> At this point, I think murder entered into the minds of the brothers. 
we're going to get rid of him. We're going to get rid of him. And one day they're out tending the, the, tending the sheep and the, and the camels and stuff. And here comes Joseph and Buddy. They start putting two to two together and, and getting five and they're figuring out, hey, we'll take care of him right now. We can do it now. There won't be no witnesses except for us brothers. If we get rid of him, do you think that things would have been better at home if they'd have done it? If they'd have killed him, I don't read where another one rised up and he was a favorite at that point. Amen. Maybe Benjamin, because he was so worried about letting Benjamin go out. But, but, he, but Joseph, they stick him in a pit first, or, and, and then they pull him out, and they sell him. And I'm thinking, Joseph's thinking, this ain't my dream at all, Lord. This ain't what I dreamed at all. Uh, Lord, how can a man that's got a family as messed up as mine ever do it? How are my brothers going to bow down? And I really want to step to the other side of that and think, I don't think at this point that Joseph had any idea what God was going to do, how he was going to do it. He just knew that one of these days these boys are going to bow down. I don't think it ever entered into his vision at this point that one of these days he was going to be the second in charge in Egypt, folks. Think about it. I'm telling you, it's important that you hear. I could tell you people, you go to bragging big things on them and speaking big things on them, and they start backing up and saying, hey, you're just getting carried away. Oh, hey, buddy, if Joseph would have just backed down from everything that, that was going his way, we wouldn't have had somebody to have brought him out, brought them out, and, and take care of them when the famine hit the land. No, Joseph had to step into that role that God had called him for it. And I could see having every reason to believe, man, uh, I went everywhere I do, I do good. I went to the uh, governor's house, Potiphar, and his stinking wife accused me of trying to rape her. And here I am in jail, and he's wallowing around in jail thinking, oh, man. Here I am in jail. This, I don't know how that vision is going to come to pass. And, and God uses him in the gifts, in the prison. We know the story. And, and, and even after being used in the gifts, it was he told the, the butler, he said, in three days you'll be restored. And I think the other one was the baker. And he said, in three days you'll be killed. Amen. We wouldn't have wanted to give that information out, none of us. But, but he said, remember me when you come back to the king. Guess what? He forgot. He forgot, and Joseph's just serving time, but he's just prospering. I mean, God's just prospering him into prison. He's just being lifted up in whatever situation he's in. And then all, all of a sudden, Pharaoh has a dream. We know the story, and God lifts him up, and he sees the end of it. He sees the end of it. But I'm telling you, there had to be times before he got to the place where God wanted him to be where he thought, I just can't do this. I'm just not the guy. I'm not the guy for this. And David... His, his family didn't even think he was good enough to justify being called in from the backfield. Amen? Now, that'd be something. That'd hurt my feelings. Amen? Amen. If me and Christy was, was being considered for the king, and mom and dad left me at work and just brought her up there, that'd just tell me that all they expected was one of them to get it. I wasn't even being considered. Not that the, not that the prophet wasn't considering him. His own daddy wasn't, didn't think enough of him. Amen. But it's a good thing he'd been with the Lord in the backfield and the Lord had been working in his heart, doing things in his life. Amen. They brought him up there, said he's uh, all kinds of things about him. He's small. He, he's pretty. You know, all the things that a, that a warring king didn't need to be. Amen. Think about it. He, didn't fit the, he did not fit the cookie cutter. The last king stood head and shoulders above everybody. And I mean, I know we know now on this side of it, what a, what a scoundrel Saul turned out to be. But they didn't know then. And they're thinking, he's the right guy. So when Samuel shows up, he's looking through the brothers. And the first one, man, he's tall. He looks like a man of war. This is the guy. And he had to go down all of them. The Lord said, this ain't it. Scratched his head and they brought David in. And the Lord had already looked in David's heart and said, this is the guy. This is the guy. Amen. And, and, and thinking about it, his brothers are thinking, he's going to be the king? He's going to be the king? I'm sure they didn't know he killed a lion. He killed a bear back there. And God had been working in him and, and doing things. I bet you David had his own doubts about what God was going to do. Oh, don't you think that he wondered after the oil poured on him and Saul remained king, uh, am I really going to be the king or did that prophet get it wrong? I don't look much like a king. Amen. But he had leadership. He had leadership in him. People follow him wherever he went to. They'd follow him. God had placed something in him. Amen. 
I think about Paul. And he's the opposite side of the coin. In Philippians, he, we have this excerpt 3 through 8 in chapter 3. It says, For we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he have whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and the Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Amen. Paul was the flip side of the coin. If anybody should have been a, a, a Pharisee, it was Paul. He was zealous, and he had been educated, and, and he had done all the right things. Amen. Done all the right things. He was following the right trail. If anybody should have been a leader, it should have been Paul. Amen. And he was counting on all those things that he had done. Amen. All of those things. And he was working that out. He was persecuting the church. He was even there when Stephen was, was, was stoned to death. It said they laid their garments at, at, at Saul's feet as they stoned Stephen. Amen. He was being a part of all of these things in the Bible. But there come a day when he had a meeting with Christ. And all of those things had to be laid down. Amen. All of those things that his trust and his confidence in, in the and had to be laid down. And it says here that, that he counted them all but dumb, that he might win. Amen. He, he, he didn't even get to go preach to the Jews. You'd have thought at least the Lord would have let him have the ministry to the Jews, but not so. He sent him to the Gentiles. Why is that? Because the Bible says that God uses the, uh, the foolish things to confound the wise. Amen. The foolish things to confound the wise. Why is it that a man or a woman can go to church and, and a service and them preach on everything but salvation, but the Holy Spirit touch a man or a woman or a child's heart and them go to the altar and get born again? Amen. Why is that? Because the Spirit of God can do as He wants to do. He can move and He's moving in ways that we don't even know this morning. Amen. Uh, Wow. Somebody go get me an air pump. Some folks look like they need to be aired up this morning. Amen. Pumped up. I tell you what. Amen. The devil. Uh, I could tell you I talked to Sister Quita this morning for service. And, 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 and the devil's just warred against her about trying to get ready for tonight. He's going to try to hinder the work of the ministry inside the church. Amen. But guess what? I'm just going to preach on. Amen. I'm just going to uh, go on because I know that there are some Pauls in this people this morning. I know that there may be a Rahab sitting here this morning who was labeled a prostitute and not worthy to do anything. But one day she got obedient to God and she saved her whole family through obedience. Amen. And what happened? The lineage of Christ barged right through that, that line. What can happen when one person will allow God to move in their life and, to, and to not worry about all of those things of the past? God got past it. You need to get past it. Amen. I know there's people that will run around and remind you, but you just tell them God got past it, you're going to have to get past it too. Amen. If God called you into the ministry, if God's telling you to do something, you can mark it down. You could do it. He could turn around that mess and make it into a masterpiece. Amen. I'm telling you, He can. Because I'll tell you what, if you got my application before I got saved, it was pretty pitiful. Every reason in the world why y'all wouldn't have wanted me in the church house or wanted me up here this morning behind the pulpit. But God to take that mess and He can make a masterpiece out of it. He's done it, amen, in places in here today. 
Amen. He's done it at places in here, and he's wanting. I'm telling you today, maybe you, maybe you don't know this morning, but I think you do. He's wanting to change you. I think there's people in here that the Lord's been dealing with and dealing with. Hey, you need to step up. You need to step out of this and move forward. you got to get up and move because this thing's going to keep you drugged down. The Lord can't use you anchored down. He can't use you anchored down. He needs for you to get your mind free so that you can operate. Wow. Amen. I want you to know that you go to church with people just like these people we talked about. Amen. They're in here. And there's more testimonies this morning than I could share. But I've asked two this morning to share their testimony about where they started out as and, and how God has brought them to a new place. Amen. And it's working through them. So I'm going to ask... Brother Terry, who stand right now. Y'all may or may not know, but Brother Terry's a deacon in this church right now and has been uh, a couple times, I believe. And a Sunday school teacher, amen, and, and does all kinds of other things. But I want him to tell you a little bit about where he come from, amen. Well, before I got saved, um, I was a drug addict, and a lot of y'all think, well, yeah, he smoked pot, but I dropped acid. We called it crank back in the day, where we'd snort crank and be up for three, four days at a time and um, drank all the time is ridiculous and um, my marriage was on the rocks which you would think that's what that stuff's good for and that's about right I'd take joints of marijuana to work with me all the time and um, just I don't know it just uh, I wasn't a good husband just I wasn't a good daddy there was nothing really good about me and when God saved me uh, I give all that stuff up and and um, anyway instead of going to I went to work then <laughs> instead of joints with the testimony you know, I, I did my best with my wife to try to make things amend, and, and we're, we've been married now. Um, it's going to be 33, 34 years coming up. And uh, kids, you know, they was little when, when I was doing all that junk. We, we dropped uh, some acid once in the house, and Heather was about two. And I thought, God, if she gets that, she'll die. And we searched everyone there, and we finally found it, you know. But, uh, you know, I, my, my concern for my family was horrible. And now, you know, Heather, she's in the ministry and does great, and Kyle's in church. And, you know, God just changed our life around. We, we, I had a job, but we had no money, and, and it ain't that we got all the money we want now, but God has provided very good for us. And, and things has just changed. The, the old things has passed away, and behold, all things has become new because of Jesus Christ in my life. Amen. Amen. And I know there's, there's more. Amen, there's more. I got a chance to spend some time with, with Jack Kathy this weekend, and Brother Jack was testifying in his life where God had brought him from. And, and I'm telling you, uh, they, and we need to share these testimonies. Why do we want to drag up that past? Because, folks, listen to me. There's some people in here today and in here week after week that just can't get past what they've done. They don't understand that God could turn it around. They don't understand that God can use them. Amen. And He may not use you just like you want to be used next week, but through the process of time, He'll sanctify you. He'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. And you'll be trained up and discipled in the church. Amen. I sat through Sunday school. Amen. And learned and asked questions. Why? So that I could grow in the Lord. So I could, could have the things of God. I wanted to do something for the Lord. Amen. And there needs to be a desire in you. But, but I wanted to have, share another testimony before we close and go to an altar tonight. And uh, as Sister Rhonda is standing, uh, uh, as she's standing, amen, so everybody can see her, amen. She teaches our rainbows on, on Wednesday night. And not just that, there's other things that she's done. She's taught our women and, and done things. And I, I don't know every position that, that she's held while she's went to church here and went to other churches. But, but let her tell you where she come from, and it, it'll blow your mind what God can do. Well, um, at the age of nine, my dad and mom got saved, and I mean, it completely changed our life. But most of you know, at nine years old, you can already be pretty set in sin. And by the age of 13 or 14, I can't remember exactly, I started using marijuana, and um, I had a friend that lived up the road, and we would steal it. So then we started stealing other things just, just to be doing it. So... The, it rocked on, and then, of course, you know, I'm, I'm, we even got to, we would steal people's vehicles. 
And this is when I, before I was even old enough to drive. I didn't even have, but, you know, it was from family members, and we'd bring them back that morning, so they didn't even know it lots of the times. But um, as, um, as it rocked on, you know, and then, of course, it was just a lot of other things. You know, you would just allow your body to be used for whatever so you can have the drugs that you wanted. And then when I was 18, and during all this time, my mom and dad was living for the Lord. They were praying for me day and night, and I'm so thankful because I can remember many times I would have been dead because I would put myself in some pretty rough situations. And as a girl, you know, you ain't strong enough to win all of the fights. But um, God was always there, and I can remember even during those rough times that I was living out in sin and very young, that I'd have these gut feelings, and it'd make me so sick in the bottom of my stomach. I'd say, man, I can't go tonight. I can't go. I'm not crawling out that window tonight. And I know, I look back now, and I know without a doubt, that was my, my God keeping me safe and keeping me probably from dying. You know, he, Satan, can, Satan can torment you, and he can, he can just make this body a mess, but he can't take your life. God is the only one that has that control. And then, of course, when I was 18, I got myself pregnant. And um, I, back then, you know, you just got married, whether you loved them or not. And so for 15 years, I lived in a pretty rough life where we, we hurt each other more times than I cared to talk about. And I was blessed tremendously with a wonderful son that my mom and dad, I, I left him with my mom and dad a lot. And he, I can remember at a very young age, him telling me, Mom, I'm going to be a preacher. I'm going to be a preacher. Mama, please go to church with me. I'm like, I don't want anything to do with that. I don't want any, I don't want, I don't want to be near church people. And I was cruel to them. I read about Paul in the Bible. And y'all, there was, I never took anybody's life. But there are so many times I could look you straight in the face. So many times I'd look at Christians and I would cut them to the core. Because I allowed Satan to torment me to the point where I didn't, you know, I hated him. I hated everybody that I could find wrong in every Christian. And I did, and I didn't care to tell you about it. So it rocked on, and I was using acid. I was using crank. I was sh shooting up. And um, I just got to a point where I, I was just a walking dead body. That's all it was. I looked like it. I acted like it. I hated everybody that I was around. I hated myself. And I would just do it, you know, just to maybe get through that next day, just to be, just to, you know, wake up that morning. I would take something and I would, you know, smoke dope all day long. And on my job, I mean, I was able to function. I, Satan allowed that. But, I, you know, I guess just so I could buy more. But, you know, you, then you start selling it to, to, to get more. And as the years go on, I just got to where I just hated it so bad. And I remember one night Kevin had come to me and um, he said, Mama, he said, Daddy's in there making a drug deal on our phone. And something hit me. And it was like, Lord, I don't want this no more. I've had all I can take. And... I told the Lord that night, if you will get me out of this mess. And to my knowledge, that's the only time I ever remember talking to the Lord. But um, I told him, if you'd get me out of this mess, I don't. I know it was in February, and I know it was on a Thursday. And I just, I thought, I guess back then I had to go to an altar in a church. And so I, I had told myself, come Sunday, I'm going to church, and I'm going to be saved. Come Sunday, I'm going to church, and I'm going to be saved. <laughs> And I'll never forget, my cousin called me Saturday night. And, of course, all my family at this point, they didn't want nothing to do with me. All my cousins, she was a low-life piece of trash, and I don't want her in my house. I don't want her around my husband. I don't want her around my kids. I don't want her anywhere in around me. But she called me that night, and for some reason I said, Pam, I want to go to church. I want to go to church Sunday. And she said, Lord, in mercy, I'll be there to pick you up. <laughs> And so she took me to church, and I couldn't wait till the preacher get, got through. And me and Kevin both, we went to that altar. And I gave my life to God. And y'all, 
That was the best feeling in the whole wide world because I left it all there. When I got up, I was delivered from drugs, totally delivered. I wanted God more than anything else in my life. And I can stand here and tell you today I'm not perfect, but he helps me to soar like an eagle above that storm. And there has been storms since my since my salvation. Y'all have went through a divorce. I've went through bankruptcy I have lost everything except my salvation but my salvation kept me going my salvation is the reason why I kept going and I could still shout I could still claim my victory because I knew my future and I knew where I was going and now I can stand here without a shadow of a doubt and tell you there will still be storms and there will still be trials but God says I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake Thank you. He has proved that promise to me over and over and over. I'm so thankful that I have a God that I serve that will always be there for me. Hallelujah. My, my. And I could call, if it wasn't for time, I could call person after person, Brother Jeff, and they could stand up this morning. That say where God has brought them from. And I could tell you that, that in, a, in a situation where I've got to have spiritual uh, guidance myself, and I can't get to, uh, well, it don't, I ain't got to get to, Brother Arnold's usually always around, so I'd go talk to him. But if I couldn't find Brother, Brother Arnold, Brother Terry's right on my speed dial. Amen. And I'd call him up, Brother Doug, and I'd ask him, what do you think about this situation? Now, there might be folks left in this world that know Brother Terry that wouldn't, wouldn't take no advice off of him at all, but I don't know him like that. Amen. I know him as the one that stood up in that old schoolhouse and taught Sunday school and answered questions for me and befriended me. Amen. And told me, hey, uh, don't make promises you can't fulfill. Just don't make the promise. Mean, there's things, there's seeds that he's sowed into my life, but still they're part of me, Brother Terry. Sister Rhonda, I don't know of anybody anymore that I'd say any more spiritual than, than Sister Rhonda that loves the Lord, that worships the Lord. Amen. I bet you go in that courthouse and take a poll about, about who, who do they think is going to be the first one to heaven. And they'd, I don't know who all works there. We may have more employees there. But I guarantee you she's going to be in the top two. Amen. But you know what? They don't know what she come from. Amen. Where she was. Amen. And those stories. Amen. That she shared with us today. They don't know about that. But guess what? She's got past it. She's realized that God is more than enough. Amen. He's more than enough. And I'm going to tell you today, she's married to a good man. Amen. She's married to a good man today that loves her and takes care of her. Amen. And, and, and they have, you know, she's talking about things going on. I bet you their house is right as rain. Amen. <laughs> I bet it's right as rain. And, 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 oh, man, what can God do if we'll just say, Lord, you know what? All right, I'm ready. I'm ready, Lord. I know I've really messed this thing up. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? It's all right to know that you've made a mess out of things. That's all right. Amen. Because we all did. We, we messed it up. But guess what? The Lord could straighten a mess out. Amen. I used to like to sit down with with ropes and stuff that was tangled up and, and untie them knots out and untie them, straighten them back out. I don't know. Well, it's just some weird something I like to do. But you know what? The Lord could take that knotted up mess of your life. And I could tell you, there's people in here today that's saying, not mine, I can't come back from this. Yeah, you can. Amen, you can. Amen. The Lord can even bring us back from death to do His will. He walked by Lazarus' tomb and said, Lazarus, come forth. Death don't have no power. Amen. Nothing that can hold you back this morning except yourself. And don't let that enemy have a foothold this morning. I'm fist to give an altar call. And when I do this morning, I want you just to step out in the aisle. Amen. Because that's the only way it's going to happen. 
is if you'll make a move. Amen? You need to make a, you need to make a move for the Lord. Ain't it worth it? Amen. That he, he can look at the mess that you now call your life and say, I'll fix it all. Amen. Just one drop of my blood will fix it all. Amen. This morning, with every head bowed, nobody looking around this morning. Amen. There's, there's somebody here that needs to give their life to the Lord. Amen. There's somebody in here this morning. You know. Amen. I'm living in a mess right now. But I need to give my life to the Lord and let it start being straightened out. Amen. I don't want you to raise your hand. I want you to step out from wherever you're at and come down to one of these altars. You won't be here just a second and somebody will meet you. I promise you, you won't be out in the aisle just a minute and you'll feel better about what's going on. Would you come this morning? Would you submit yourself unto God? Receive the gift that He's given for you. Come on. Make that step. Hallelujah. Make that step this morning. What are you waiting on? What would tomorrow make a difference? Next week, next month. Come this morning. You're lost and you're undone. You need Jesus as your Lord. Amen. Nobody's going to think nothing. But congratulations. We're glad to have you part of the family. Would you come out this morning? Would you make that walk for Jesus? Oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How about this morning? You, you the Lord's trying to get you to do work with your life, but you're under so much condemnation from things that's done and went on that you can't do nothing. Would you come this morning? After all that you've heard, would you come this morning? These testimonies that's demonstrated how God can bring us out. Would you come this morning to an altar and pray and ask the Lord, forgive me, Lord, for not moving. Oh, Lord. Nobody this morning. Hallelujah. The Lord wants you to get past it. He's trying to encourage you to get past it this morning. He wants to do work. They're coming this morning. Won't you? Will you let the devil win another battle in your life? Won't you come? If you're lost, it'll be a great time for you to slip in with these folks that are coming. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. My God. Father, we seek you this morning, Lord. Lord, we know we've done your will this morning, Lord. God, I pray now you deal with hearts, God. Deal with hearts in this place this morning, Lord. Draw them, Lord. Hallelujah. that preacher how about that preacher that's in here today got a call on their life and they know they do how about those teachers in here just can't get past it just can't get past it don't feel worthy How about that one that can't even pray for somebody else because they don't feel worthy? How about it this morning? You won't even pray for your neighbor because you don't feel like that you're good enough. Won't you come this morning to the altar and seek the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like to ask some of our others to gather around and start praying. Hallelujah.